let's move on to payment info worksheet so uh, i'm done here details sheet and i'm going to click on the payment info and let's see what we have i'm going to zoom in make more room and let's go ahead and calculate the apr annual percentage rate and we can figure out the apr from this table if you have 15 years, you're going to put the APR 3.250, so you would just go here and you would type 32.50%. But there is an elegant way to do it. We can use a function that will look up the information for us. You can uh, go to formulas, and the functions are in categories. You can always go and search for whatever you're looking for. For example, in this case, it would be lookup or something similar. I know the name of the function is V for vertical, L lookup, V lookup, and you can read the information about the function. Let's double click it. And then you have all these arguments. Now, being the first time you are using this function, you might not be familiar with all these arguments. For that reason, let's go ahead and actually click an insert function symbol over here, f of x. So we have this helping window. It's called the function arguments window. Then over here, when you click on each of these arguments, it gives you information. And a very good idea is to click on help on this function. The first thing that you are going to discover is that actually there is a new function now. It's called xlookup. It will be able to look not only on a column, so vertical lookup, but also on a row, horizontal lookup. Whenever you have a function, play the video and uh, look at the examples. So that helps you very much. So remember what we did? We were looking for 15 years, for example. So what are we looking for? We are looking for what is in this column F. I'm looking for in this row, we are having 25. Where do we look for 25? We have to look it up into this table where we have years and rate. So for the table array, I'm going to select the years and the rate. Column index number, it explains, is the column number in table array, so in this selection we just did, from which the matching value should be returned. The first column of the table is 1. So if I type 1, it gives us information from column 1 of the table. I'm looking for 25 into this table, so of course it's going to give me 25. But what if I look in the second column? If you look in the second column, it will take the 25 and it will give you 3.625% or 0 0.0365, as you can see the result in here. The last argument is optional, and always read the help over here. It explains that by default it is true. So if you don't put anything in here, it will be assumed to be true. And what does it mean? It means that the first column is sorted in ascending order. And indeed, the first column is sorted in ascending order. Now, I usually, if I'm looking for an exact match, I usually type here false. So let me show you what it means if you do not type false in here. If I push OK, it gives me this information. What if instead of 25 years, you have, let's say, 24 years? It's going to match the information. It's going to give you the closest number. So the closest number was actually this one. So it gives me the information for 15. But that's not what we want, right? So I'm going here, back here. And uh, you see, you can also use this. So after the column index number, you can type in a comma, and then you get contextual help. And you can see true what it is, and I can use the down arrow, and you can see false what it is, exact match. So that's what we want. I'm going to click it, or rather double click it, and let's push enter, and let's see if we get it right. And then it gives me this error message because indeed I'm looking for an exact match. So that's actually right. You can use another function that can take care of the errors to actually display the correct information. Or you can use that new function xlookup, which is actually much better. 
Now let's see what happens if you fill down the formula. I'm going to fill it down. And we have a surprise. So we are moving down. Remember, I have the blue and the red. If we're moving down, they will move down too. So the blue moves down and the red moves down. Do you remember how you can actually lock the red into place? We can just select it. You don't really have to select the whole thing, but just part of the first, the D4, and part of E6. And then the shortcut you can use is F4 on the keyboard, F4. And that will put all the dollar signs, which means that you just locked that entire range. So then if you push Control Enter, and now double click, that red table now is locked. Okay, that's what we want.